Well, hey folks, uh, just got a little Jonah extra for you, and um, uh, this will probably come up before, so I look forward to uh, a setup, uh, kind of just hitting the high spots on a, on a setup on an SG. Um, this is an SG that I actually just purchased. It's an Epiphone G400 faded um, cherry finish and uh, I'll correct even though this is like I said this will be out before you see the other video I'll correct something I say in, in the video that's going to be posted later which was that it wasn't grain filled it was just a matte finish and not grain filled but actually it is grain filled it's uh, there's no absolutely no grain uh, pores at all in the body or the neck uh, back front sides anywhere um, so, um, I, I can't, I can't, uh, I bought this on kind of a whim, actually. I've just kind of always wanted an SG, and when I found out that these things were as inexpensive as they are, uh, I, okay, I got one. Um, I like it. I like the way, well, I set it up, and you'll see that in the, in the following video. Set it up, and, uh, and it, it had a, just a crummy setup on it coming out of the uh, store out of the Guitar Center um, and so you'll see that but I don't want to spend any time talking about that what I want to talk about on this one uh, well one other thing is just that if you're in the market for a an entry-level guitar uh, you know as long as you take it to somebody and get it set up well um, there's there's nothing wrong with this as a as an entry level I played it today and I I liked it a lot um, it's not like playing a custom-made guitar, but it's it's pretty decent. Um, what I'm going to do is one little trick uh, that that I do on my own guitars, and if uh, I've talked to a customer and find out they want it done, uh, and depending, I mean, if it was a vintage guitar, I wouldn't do it. And uh, what that is is uh, I'm going to I'll turn you down here and zoom in um, on a Gibson. Tunomatic style bridge. Let's see, maybe the better way to do this. Yeah, just straight in this way, just knocking stuff off the wood pile under my bench. Um, and now my amp is sliding. All right. Get this over here for a knee rest. This way. Okay, so I'm guessing you can see this. There we go. When you um, when you play these this style bridge and you palm mute, you're laying your hand right on the bridge, and right on this corner of the the uh, low E saddle and the high E saddle, you can see it's just sharp very sharp, just a square sharp edge that uh, is just kind of annoying when you're playing and uh, and you want to do a, a chug, you know, whatever. Right? You get this, you get your, your palm is grinding on that sharp point. You don't really feel the bottom one, but if you're going to do one, you may as well do them both. So anyway, the, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to tape off the pickup so that I don't get filings stuck to the pickup or dropping down in and getting into the, the magnet. Um, and then, um, but I think this is brass. Anyway, but I'm still going to protect that pickup. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to just round the corner off. I don't Around the corner off on this uh, these saddles, and uh, they may they may be metal under here, they may be brass under. If they're brass, I'm going to end up with a little tiny 
brass corner showing there and uh, that's just okay with me because I'd rather have that than feel that sharp edge now I it's uh, it's hard to uh, hard to fish tape underneath you know without it getting stuck on things so I tend to put my rule underneath stick my tape onto the roll and then just drag it through that way then I have a way of getting getting stuff through and you'll work it back and take it down get rid of that so you don't scratch anything anyway so this is down I'm just using a nut file because I couldn't find my six inch roll so that just get you right where you need to be as well. All right. Okay, so pickups taped off. All right. I have that my save file which is uh, one edge, one corner of this triangle file is, is uh, not going to cut. I also don't want to hit the, the stop piece back here. So just very carefully, just going to take that little corner and kind of roll up on it. So I don't have that sharp, that sharp corner. I don't know if you can, yeah, that's all it took. I'm gonna go a little more. All right, now I do have some filings right down here on the guitar. Just gonna dump it off, blow. Okay, there's still a couple hanging on down there. I got a toothbrush. Just gonna go in here with the toothbrush and get rid of those. Okay, now I've filed it and it's it's pretty you know good as far as right straight onto it, but you got a sharp edge coming back from the, the square cliff edge of this thing. The front's got a, you know, a rake, a rake on it, so you're not feeling anything there. I want to sand that. Again, I don't want to sand anything except exactly that little thing, so I'm just covering anything else that I might accidentally sand. And, um, I could have done this during the setup, which would make more sense. You know, I had the strings loose, I could have just popped it off, taken it off and filed it and not had to worry about anything else around it. That would have been the simple way to do it. But like I said, since I don't, uh, well, I don't want to get anything else marked up and I definitely don't want to sand anything. I could also use one of my, um, I just bought a package of those two. I was just at uh, Walmart yesterday, actually when I was in town buying this. Um, so, just a piece of sand is a 320, I think. It could be a 220. Just giving it a little extra love in here with the sandpaper. And I'm just gonna go that way. I'm not worried about hitting this string because these strings probably aren't going to last, you know, they're not like something you got to worry about, it's not permanent. If you're, a, if you're just a player, you know, and you're one of those guys that like changes your strings once every six months or something and it's a big ordeal, then yeah, you know, you want to be careful and you might think that, uh, you know, it's wasteful or whatever, but you know, guys that work on guitars all the time, a set of strings is like, 
just the cost of doing business. You just get them out of your way and put a new set on when you're done lots of times. Typically trying to save strings when you're doing guitar work is more work than they're worth. Yeah, now that feels that feels really good now. So I don't know if I'll be able to zoom in on that. Nah. Can you see that? I, I don't think you can see that. I don't know, but just just really nice and round now with nothing nothing goobery hanging up on the fingers so that's good so I'm gonna do the other side uh, it wasn't brass under there so that's some sort of steel which is good as far as not seeing any you know discoloration uh, it's not shiny if I was if I was wanting to get uh, let's definitely zoom out there um, if I was wanting to get crazy about it, I could take it through the grits and buff it up. And it's one of those things. If I uh, if I happen to have the saddle off anytime soon, and I actually remember to do it, I'll uh, I'll probably just do exactly that. Just hit the corner with some finer grit paper, buff it out, and put it all back together. It'll be it'll be nice. So I'm going to do the other one, and it'll be done. And I uh, just wanted to share that little thing with you. Just. Uh, makes all the difference in the world if you're you know if you play like that where you've got your hand on the bridge you palm mute or whatever you don't have that thing biting into you the whole time so yeah uh, if you haven't done that give that a whirl on your uh you know tunematic style bridges and see i've um i've done it on on even you know u.s stuff that's brass and plated and uh you know yeah you, you have a little brass showing but it's uh you know, whatever. It's if you don't want that, don't do it. But I like the feel more than I'm worried about whether or not there's a little corner of brass peeking through. So, all right. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.